Before my grandpa joined the Indian Railways, he worked for a few years for the East African Railways. It was during this time that he had this famous encounter with an ostrich. Here is his story in his own words. I was engaged in the laying of a new railway line. I lived in a small township, but my work was some 12 miles away. I had to travel to and from the work site on horseback. One day, my horse had a small accident, so I decided to walk to work. I knew a shortcut through the hills that would save me about six miles. This shortcut went through an ostrich farm or camp, as it was called. It was the breeding season. I knew the male birds were very aggressive in breeding season, ready to attack at the slightest provocation, but I also knew that my dog would scare away any bird that might try to attack me. Though it may seem strange, the fact is that even a big ostrich, about nine feet tall, will run faster than a racehorse at the sight of a small dog. So I felt quite safe in the company of my dog. When I reached the camp, I climbed through the wire fencing and keeping a good lookout, dodged across the open spaces between the thorn bushes. Now and then I saw a few birds feeding some distance away. I had gone about half a mile from the fencing when my dog spotted a hare. Now chasing hares was that dog's passion. I tried calling him back, but I knew it was hopeless. I do not know whether it was the dog's bark or my own shouting, but what I was avoiding immediately happened. The ostriches were scared and began darting to and fro. Suddenly, I saw a big male bird emerge from a thicket about a hundred yards away. He stood still and stared at me for a few moments. I stared back. Then, expanding his short wings and with his tail erect, he came towards me. As I had nothing, not even a stick, with which to defend myself, I turned and ran towards the fence. But it was an unequal race. What were my steps of two or three feet against the creature's great strides of sixteen to twenty feet? There was only one hope. To get behind a large bush and try to dodge the bird until help came. A dodging game was my only chance. And so I rushed for the nearest clump of thorn bushes and waited for my hunter. The great bird wasted no time. He was soon there. Then the strangest battle took place. I dodged this way and that, taking great care not to get directly in front of the ostrich's deadly kick. Ostrich's kick forward, and with such terrific force, that if you were struck, their huge chisel-like nails would cause you much damage. I was breathless, and really quite helpless, calling wildly for help as I circled the thorn bush. I began to feel weak. How much longer could I keep going? I was ready to drop from tiredness. Suddenly, the angry bird charged straight at me. Somehow, I jumped to one side, I do not know how, but I found myself holding on to one of the bird's wings quite close to its body. It was now the ostrich's turn to be frightened. He began to turn, or dance, or waltz, moving round and round so quickly that my feet were soon swinging out from his body, almost horizontally. All the while, the ostrich kept opening and shutting his beak with loud snaps. Imagine my situation, as I clung desperately to the wing of the enraged bird. He was whirling me round and round, as though he were a discus thrower, and I the discus. My arms soon began to ache with the strain, and the swift and continuous circling was making me dizzy. But I knew that if I relaxed my hold 
even for a second, a terrible fate awaited me. Round and round we went in a great circle. It seemed as if the bird would never tire. And I knew I could not hold on much longer. Suddenly the ostrich went into reverse. This sudden move made me lose my hold and I fell flat on the ground. Even before I had time to realize what had happened, the big bird was upon me. I thought the end had come. I raised my hands to protect my face, but the ostrich did not strike. I moved my hands from my face, and there stood the creature, with one foot raised, ready to deliver a deadly kick. I could not move. As I watched, frightened, the ostrich turned his head sharply to the left. A second later, he jumped back, turned, and ran away as fast as he could go. Confused, I wondered what had happened. I soon found out, to my great joy, I heard the bark of my dog, and the next moment, he was jumping around me, licking my face and hands. I gladly returned all the affection. 